uh, let's see, I'll open the meeting of the, of the uh, Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting on um, February 12th, uh, 2021 at 10.03 a.m. Meetings normally held in municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. This meeting will be probably recorded and maybe uploaded later uh, if you're if you're um, listening or watching and the dial in the number is 312-626-6799. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580 and the passcode should you need it is 570012. And if you go to the town's website, um, bottom right, you'll see our calendar and meetings. You can click on the agenda. There's a link to the, this Zoom meeting here in the agenda. And we're here today to talk about updates uh, from um, uh, DPC, our engineer for the wastewater treatment project for going out to bid on the large first phase of the project and listen to uh, information about the 30B bids we did for equipment. So uh, welcome. Great, thank you for the introduction, Trevor. Um, just gonna get my screen shared here. Okay. So as Trevor mentioned, um, hopefully this is going to be the last update we give you uh, before we go out to bid and then move into construction, you know, of this large project here. Um, so we thought it would be a good time to basically share where we're at, um, where we're going from here, and then receive any feedback or, you know, anything kind of here before we go out to bid so we can incorporate that uh, with enough time. Um, so I'm just going to walk through um, mainly the Chapter 30B equipment procurement, which was, you know, a major undertaking that we went through um, to essentially pre-procure certain pieces of equipment for the project um, that we thought were critical that the town receive not only quality, but a good price on. Um, there are also unique types of equipment that help us from an engineering standpoint to know, you know, what we're going to have um, going into construction so we can design the plans and the buildings and structures around those specific types of equipment, given their uniqueness. Uh, we'll then touch on the schedule and where we're at uh, with that and talk about the next steps. Great. Uh, so for those who are familiar with the Chapter 30B process, um, there is guidance from uh, the Massachusetts Inspector General. Um, we followed that, you know, to a T. Um, there is a guidance document for that. Um, and essentially, it allows us to issue an RFP to interested parties, you know, the manufacturers of these pieces of equipment so that they could submit proposals based on um, evaluation criteria that we come up with, and then also price. So it's not purely a, a low price um, selection um, and essentially balances the quality, you know, with the cost effectiveness of what the town's receiving. Um, so just down here, you know, this is just an example, you know, there's some minimum criteria, which is pretty much checking off the boxes to make sure that they submitted everything required. And then there's some evaluation criteria that we step through for each of the manufacturers, um, you know, and those correspond to highly advantageous, advantageous, and so on. And those are all explicitly defined in the RFP that we issued. Um, so that's clear, you know, what they're going to be evaluated on. So that's the overall process. We issue the RFP, we get responses back, and then we step through this. Once we get through the evaluation criteria is when we make the decision whether or not to open the price envelopes. So it is a, a qualitative review without price influencing any of that process. And then we move to the price proposals and make an overall decision based on that. So that's just an overview of the 30B process. If anybody has questions throughout this too, just stop me. Um, I might go on fast, so. So just to give kind of an overview of the pieces of equipment that we chose to go through this process, um, this is essentially a hydraulic profile going through the plant from left to right. So flow comes in this way and then it continues down here. The influence screen, um, which removes rags, floatables, you know, all the big things you don't want to continue through the process, that's right up at the front of the plant. That was one of the pieces of equipment. Uh, the grit removal system, which essentially removes any of the sand, grit, um, you know, all of that material that you don't want getting into your pumps and aeration tanks and, and processes further down. 
That was a second piece of equipment. The secondary clarifier, um, which we actually just replaced, finished up last year, that earlier project, the secondary clarifier upgrades project. Um, so uh, Keith's going to be getting a second clarifier. So that was equipment for that new tank. And then finally, the UV disinfection system, which essentially kills all the bacteria and viruses before we then discharge out to the river. Um, so these were pretty key. I mean, looking through the rest of the hydraulic profile, these really are the big pieces um, of the facility. Yep. And Justin, can I just uh, jump here real quick since we have this diagram up? Uh, just mm -hmm. looking ahead to phase two, because this was the first chunk of work we we're gonna do. And I know we're gonna get working on design for phase two. Can you just hit on those items that were, you know, the, just the big high level kind of what was in the next thing? I think it had to do with aeration. Yep. 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 So that, that's all gonna take place essentially where you don't see the red circles. Um, yep. the, the major upgrade will be with the aeration tanks here. Yep. Um, so changing out the mechanical aerators that Keith currently has. Um, yep. Also raising the walls and putting in a divider channel between the tanks. Yep. To essentially give him more flexibility process wise. Yeah. And then in the building where the UV disinfection is going to go, there's going to be um, new systems for, for pumping as well. That's uh, right. Yep. And that's and the sludge pumping. Blowers. Out. Yes, exactly. And the, and, the new blowers. Blowers. and the new blowers. Yeah. Yep. yep. Exactly. Instead of using that big fan on top of the aeration, yep. right? We're looking to, to bubble right. up underneath. Yep. And then solid handling is the other piece that's yep. in phase two. Um, one item to note as we kind of transition into the active bidding phase relative to phase one and two, one of the things that we had in phase two that's pulled itself into phase one by necessity was the replacement plant water system. So the plant water system was originally planned as part of phase two, but that water pressure um, cleaning capacity is needed for the new headworks building. Okay. So we had to kind of slide things in and out as, as would be anticipated, but yeah. That therein lies some of the strategy mm -hmm. with all the alternates that are that are proposed, which Justin will touch on those a little later. Yep. Carolyn, you had a question? Yeah, I just was wondering, so, um, geez, I, I really don't want to cut any of this out because, you know, the cost of sludge hauling is so awful. Yeah. Um, and we don't want to beat up new equipment. Mm. Cut out well. We don't. We're hoping not to cut out any of this, right? I, I mean, know. yeah. We're ho we're hoping we don't have to cut out anything. We just want to make sure that after you open the bids, in the event that you, you know, we wouldn't want to open time. up a bid if we've got an eight point three, eight point four million dollar allowance for bidding. Like, let's say the bids came in at eight point eight million, it would be unfortunate to have to like throw the bids out, and not be able to move forward. So the alternates give us flexibility. In that case, you know, maybe we do are able to do five or six of the seven alternates. And it yeah. isn't that six and seven don't get done. They just might have to get deferred to phase two. Right. Um, they're designed, they're shovel ready. Um, again, we hope none of that happens, but, yeah. you know, we learn from our mistakes from other clients. So it's always good to, to have other clients benefit from the, uh, the lessons learned. And we'll go through those those alternates too yeah. again, so everybody has those. But you're right, like uh, like Carolyn, like that. The headworks is like the most important thing to kind of save all the stuff downstream, and that's yep. what we haven't had. And you know, t-shirts, sneakers, everything kind of comes flying through. So, Justin, can you pull up a copy of the plan if you're able to for the headworks building? I just want to touch on a question that Dave Wolfram asked the other mm -hmm. night, and I wanted to follow up on that because I. I feel like I answered it, but maybe not as thoroughly as I could after I talked to Tony um, after the meeting. During the meeting when we were talking about the grid system, uh, one of the selectmen, Dave Wolfram, had mentioned you know, some concern about grit pumping equipment and how he's had experience with that in his endeavors. Um, the grit system that's been selected is basically a tank. And Justin pulled up a really good figure that shows what's going on. When you have a tank like that, you have two types of methods that you can use for pumping. One is a submersible pump. One is a suction lift pump. The submersible pump is down inside the tank. The suction lift pump would be up above the floor of the building. Yep. Uh, Dave mentioned some other you know, types of pumps that he's had experience with. Those other pumps would be options if we had an expanded bigger building with a separate dry well. So yeah. we don't like we have in the RAS building and over by the new aeration tanks, we have 
a building which has a basement down next to the bottom of the aeration tanks. That would allow us to bring in other types of pumps, but it would also significantly increase the size of the building, uh, require a second dry well. So while this was very valid and that there would be, you know, other types of pumps that would be option for flooded suction, um, unfortunately, we wouldn't be able to accommodate those design elements in the project due to cost. So mm -hmm. it was a good question. Uh, yep. And if this was a, you know, Northampton or Chicopee or Springfield, like a really, really big plant, you know, that might warrant going down that road. But in this case, due to cost and everything, we're, yeah. we're okay with a five horsepower pump being a sacrificial part of the system. Cause you know, that's going to be a few grand for a replacement pump. So yeah, we go through, we're going to plan to go through those. Every we will go through year. them and we'll plan yeah. that in his budget. And uh, yeah. I saw Keith's face on there somewhere. I, I believe he's part of the, the workshop this morning, which we're lucky. Yes, on. he is. Yep. Um, we should have started by saying that the select board did everything that we asked of them a couple of nights ago. So the stress for Keith was gone when we started the meeting, but <laughs> Yeah. That was just, I just wanted to follow up on that question because I thought it was a good kind of workshop level. Yes, item. absolutely. No, thank you. All right. Let's see. Can you get back to this? Okay. Okay. So those were the main pieces that we decided to move forward with um, yep. as discussed. So now I'm going to step through kind of each of those in a little bit more detail. Um, so... And we're going to go from the head of the plant, you know, to the to the end. Um, so the screen, essentially, you know, I included a couple of photos, you know, technically in the know about these things. But essentially, there's a set of rakes, you know, they move up and down and collect any of the stuff that gets cut up against the face of the screen. Um, so essentially that would be trash rags, you know, floatables, things that you want to get out first. They essentially get carried up and dropped into a washer compactor, which then cleans, you know, the organic material off of that. So you maintain that in the waste stream. And then it, you know, condenses it and compresses it into a form that Keith can then, you know, roll off of and dispose. Um, so that's the overall, you know, operating principle. You get all the bad stuff out uh, before you continue on through the treatment now, process. Can I ask a little bit about that? Um, just how often are, is he maintained, like how often do you kind of pull that junk out of there? Is it once a day, yes. a couple hours, so the, the, it depends on what screen, thing. Yeah, so the screen is automatic. It'll have a, le a level transducer ahead of and behind the screen so it could tell the differential water level. Yep. So it'll tell, it'll tell when the face of that screen gets blinded enough to where it's backing up water based on uh -huh. so the height will increase as there's more blinding. Right. If those rakes will automatically operate um, you know, multiple times a day and carry that up to the next stage where it drops in. Yep. Um, and then just kind of probably once a day or something, you, you, you take You'll have a, that waste. washer compactor is going to run essentially continuously. Mm -hmm. you and we'll just go into a it dump. Makes a, it makes kind of like almost like a sausage that'll go into a roll off cart. Yep. And yep. Keep, we'll empty yeah. that periodically. I mean, it's not a, it's not a significant waste stream and then it has right. to be emptied a lot. Every hour. It probably is like a weekly. I mean, it okay. is not the funnest place in the plant to be hanging out inside that building. You know, yep. um, yep. it's but kind of a musty, you know, yeah. uh, damp smell. Um, yep. But yep. so it won't be outside. It won't be going into a bag, but that picture is great. And then it really illustrates the, the technology. Okay. I saw the bag and I was like, mm. <laughs> yeah, some, some go. places decide to, do, to go that route. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Like We're South going Carolina, little... South, maybe. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Um, so that's essentially the screen, how it works. Um, this is a summary of the qualification based yeah, review and the price review that, you know, we went through. Um, so we received three bids, um, for this piece of equipment. The highest scoring piece of equipment was from Duperon, which was our basis of design. So there's, there was kind of no surprise there. Um, you know, but. they kind of had a little bit of an edge, um, given that we designed around them. The unfortunate thing with them is that they forgot to uh, fill in a price in their price proposal. So oh. unfortunately had to toss them out of consideration. I think in the end, it was probably, you know, a, a good thing anyways, um, based on the prices that we received for the other two manufacturers. Uh, Duperon is usually quite higher from what I'm seeing here, just based on my experience. Again, we can't speak to what they actually <laughs> submitted. Um, so then it essentially narrowed it down to JWC and 
Custer's Water, who are both, you know, they've been in the industry for years, um, both good names. Through the qualifications-based review, they both scored as advantageous. So they were tied in that regard. We did recommend to open all price proposals um, based on the scoring here. So because Custer's was, you know, scored the same as JWC, but it came in at a lower price, that was our formal recommendation for the town to proceed with. Um, I spoke with a facility in Somerset, Mass, um, an operator who uses this system, uh, then passed that contact on to Keith so he could talk with that operator and kind of, you know, operator to operator, talk about the ins and outs of the equipment and if there were any issues with it. Um, and from what I heard back from Keith, you know, he came out of that feeling comfortable moving forward with this piece of equipment. Um, so I think this was a good outcome for the town. Okay, sounds good. Um, so I had a pause after each one, if anybody wanted to go into it deeper. I think we hit that one. So grit removal is where the flow is pretty much immediately after the screening system. Um, essentially, the operating principle is the water comes in, it gets spun around and all the heavy grit and sand, you know, gets kind of thrown to the outside and settles down into the bottom and you dispose of that sand and grit, you know, separately and the clean treated, you know, water continues on to the next process. Um, this type of system here on the right is what we were planning for Deerfield, something that, you know, in the ground in a tank, um, again, where we would have, like Dave was describing, either a submersible pump sitting down here in a yep. pit, or you could have some type of vacuum prime or suction lift, you know, pump above grade to pull that out. Um, and then, you know, the grit again goes into some type of dumpster that gets emptied, you know, maybe once a week. Um, okay. So that's the overall principle there. Cool. Um, on this system, we only received one proposal. Um, so it's unfortunate. You know, I think we learned a couple things that we're going to incorporate into the overall project uh, that the general contractor is going to shop around to try to find pieces of equipment. You know, we made some changes to loosen it up and, and perhaps allow a better, um, better competition. Um, but essentially, our, our recommendation on this one was based on there being only one, you know, we just didn't feel comfortable that we could move forward opening the price knowing that we were, you know, doing this in the best interest of the town. You know, right. there really wasn't that free and fair competition. We just didn't feel, you know, that we could move forward to that next step. So that was our recommendation. And, and that's what the select board agreed with. And we'll, so we're hoping when, when it goes out to bid, the contractor will kind of go out and, and solicit bids for this type of equipment. We'll get better off, better opportunity to have a, a you know, more. Yeah, and we've taken price. that specification. I mean, we kept the plans the way we had them, but in the specification, we loosened things up so that materials of construction, like stainless and all that stuff, are all still in there. Mm -hmm. But we're going to allow the contractor to propose a vendor that either has a submersible pump or a suction lift pump. Yeah. And the diameter may range a little bit. Now, if a contractor proposes a system that's significantly different than we've designed, the contractor is responsible for incorporating those changes as part of their effort, you know, so that the town or, you know, nobody else is on the hook for something being slightly different. And so we've kind of shown the biggest footprint and layout that we would anticipate and anything else will fit in there. And if it's yeah. significantly different, the contractor may just have to is the circle a little bit differently yep. or, you know, yep. minor things, but we want that competition because, you know, yeah. this is, this is a significantly expensive piece of equipment and, you know, yeah, yep. want to get a good price and a good piece of equipment. Yeah. And again, our specs will still be good enough that whatever they bid is going to be. Oh yeah. Decent yep. There's only a few players yep. in here and they're all right. qualified, but you know, it's like anything else, Trevor, you may see something in a spec that you're doing for one of your projects and, know that they designed around a different, you know, yeah. product than yours. And you may just say, we're not even going to bid it because of right. that. Right. Um, yeah. So that, I think that was some of what happened leading up to okay. the 30B process for grit. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And I should say we did reach out to some of the other players that did not bid to get that feedback. Um, some of it we heard was even just the 30B process. They don't like going through that because of some of the criteria, they just don't score as well. Yeah, so even, not even so much, you know, a specification or a price thing, but more just kind of the evaluation that we would go through. They just knew that they would be, you know, starting behind. So, yeah, I think we feel pretty confident now moving, you know, that into the general contractor's bid. And, and okay. Go. Oh, thank you. Yep. 
So next piece of equipment, um, we should be familiar with this one from the last uh, project that we did. Um, so it's the secondary clarifier. This is actually a photo from the last uh, installation. So as part of the phase one upgrades project, there's gonna be a whole brand new concrete structure put in the ground. And then this 30B procurement was for essentially the internals. So all this steel that you're seeing, you know, inside the tank, the platform, the drive. Um, so that's, that's really it. We were going out for another, another one of these. Um, so three bids for this one, um, West tech, which actually won the previous job. Yep. Um, Envirodyne systems and Custer's again. So the two highest scoring, highly advantageous and advantageous, those were recommended to be opened. Custer's unfortunately was a little lower, not advantageous. So we didn't get to their price proposal. Um, and really what happened here was that West Tech scored higher, but it also came in at a slightly lower price. And as Dave mentioned at the select board uh, meeting, it was actually a price that was, you know, slightly less than we received on the first project, which was right. just yeah. kind of all the, the pricing uncertainty that we're seeing in the markets. And, and yeah. so that was a good sign. Hopefully yeah. the project too. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I think this one came out, you know, in our favor as well, or in the town's favor, because Keith is going to have, you know, two clarifiers, same manufacturer, same spare parts. Yeah. Um, you know, same point of contact for, you know, when things go wrong or he needs anything. So, Carolyn, do you had a your hand up? Yeah, I'll just turn off my camera so I can maybe talk. Sure. Um, I just wanted to make sure that um, we we were had higher walls and that we could put that in the MVP write that off as the MVP grant? Yeah, so that, I guess that, that'd be a good thing to get an update. So Casey and I have been going back and forth a little bit on, on that. So we provided, I believe a summary memo, you know, talking about what we thought would fit into the MVP program. Um, and that was the higher walls on the existing clarifier as well as the aeration tanks. The new clarifier that's going in will, yes, already be set at a higher elevation. So we are taking care of that, Carolyn, with the new installation. The MVP and the MVP portion would be to retrofit kind of the existing facilities to bring those up, you know, to that mm -hmm. level. Okay. Um, so I know that's something that we need to either figure out how we could fit into the next MVP cycle, um, or Casey even brought up maybe some alternative grant programs that we can look at um, and yeah. try to and fit it into those. So. Right. Um, we definitely need to be aware of that. That's a good point. It's not a lot of money, but it will help a little bit. It all helps. Yep. 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 Okay. All right. So again, that one was good. Uh, receiving the same manufacturer that we're familiar with. Um, the last piece of equipment was the UV disinfection system. Um, so happily, hopefully Keith is going to be as happy as this guy's looking right here <laughs> when it's all said and done. I was thinking of putting your face on him, Keith. But, um, there you go. Yeah. Go for it. So, so essentially, um, instead of using chlorine like Keith does now, we're going to use an ultraviolet light to kill and inactivate all the you know bacteria, viruses, other things like that. So essentially flow would come in down the channel, flow through this unit and flow out. And, you know, at that point it would go out to the river. No water. The thing about these systems, you know, different than others is yeah. that the light bulbs that you're seeing here and yep. that through here, they actually do not come in contact with the wastewater stream at all. Oh, great. Great. Wastewater flows like down. Exactly. Yeah. So the wastewater flows through clear tubes and then the bulbs just sit around that. Yeah. You still get the light to transmit through um, without the fouling and you know buildup that you'd get on bulbs typically. So you will still have to clean clean those sleeves occasionally. Yep. Yep. Um, so essentially, that's you know the overall process of that piece of equipment there. Um, so this one we received two proposals, um, or you know, pretty close. One a little bit higher than the other. We wanted to open both prices. And again, in this case, the higher scoring manufacturer with the lower price um, ended up, you know, coming out on top. And again, that was our recommendation. Um, it's always when this happens, it doesn't always typically. Um, but we think, you know, in this case, like I said, you're getting the best quality and it's the lowest price. So you really, you really can't be. Great. Um, 
Is there anything on the UV you wanted to? I don't think so. Just um, it, it has, it, did we reach out at all? Is anybody using them? What, what you know? What are the feedbacks? How are they e easy to clean the tubes? What kind of maintenance? Yep. So I know this one. Uh, this was something Keith actually I think was hoping to uh, receive this Anaqua unit. Yeah. Uh, he was familiar yeah. with that and, and brought it to our attention. Um, we have you know talked to the manufacturers and, and got okay there. there. Yeah put on it it's it's not really too much maintenance to be honest um what did you find uh keith pardon me what did you find what, what when you talk to these what, what that's pretty ma it's pretty trouble free that okay. and it works and right. precisely because of the inverted design where none of the water actually comes in contact with the lamps that gives it that ease and plus the rack system which yep. reduces the overall weight yep. um and slip and fall hazards and everything. They've really engineered this well for safety and for right. longevity okay. and for um, electrical efficiency. Too. Yep. So. Yeah. And I'm just happy not to have to deal with the chlorine and all the, Absolutely. All the <laughs> hazmat that goes along with that. I mean, oh, that was part of the, yeah. you know, the DEP letter. So. This is much nicer, much yeah, better. Keith's, Keith's going to look like a beekeeper out there based on this design. Yeah. <laughs> <I> know, right. <laughs> Scraping the honey. <laughs> yep. yeah. But Keith, Keith brings up a good point, the energy efficiency, because I should have mentioned too, you know, when this, when water's flowing through this system, if it's down only, you know, say a foot high, you know, only those bulbs will be on treating the water. So it oh. knows to turn off unused bulbs, you know, when they're not used. So only a yeah. high flows, you know, will it be utilized. Well, that's good. That's, that's what yeah. I really like about new equipment is that every new design now is incorporating all that's known about yeah. energy efficiency and reuse yep. and recyclability and safety and all these factors now yeah. are being considered when they make these things. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. really a big positive in numerous ways when you upgrade a piece of equipment. Yep. Yep. So. As Justin is transitioning through to the next slide, I just had a couple of things I wanted to just comment on. We had a pretty brief window with the select board the other evening. Yep. Um, the first of which is that um, oftentimes when we go through these projects, you know, operators want the best and they're often unwilling to sacrifice in terms of meeting the budget. Yeah. Keith has really represented the residents of Deerfield as if he were a resident and as if this was his money he's spending. So mm -hmm. um, both going through the 30B process and being willing to vet vendors who might not have been his or our first choice in the interest of maintaining the budget. Um, also along the way, coming up with very creative solutions with Tony where you know Keith reached out and said, hey, we've got some pumps and equipment we, we can relocate as part of this project to avoid having to buy new pumps because we've recently purchased them. So he should just receive a lot of credit um, you know, with the public as as really being a good steward of the community, both as a wastewater operator and as a financial vested interest. So it's Thank not you. always the case. Thank so he, he deserves a lot of credit. So yeah, we're we're very happy, very happy for to have Keith and managing this project. So Julie. the the second just kind of comment to Carolyn's point a couple of minutes ago is that as we turn the corner and we get this phase one through the bidding process, we had talked about being primed and ready for phase two. Yes. Um, there's rumblings at the federal level of, um, you know, stimulus going through clean water fund and USDA and everything else. So Deerfield is, at, is as shovel ready and primed to move forward, particularly with the appropriation last, uh, last year for the 19 million. So um, we just need to continue to be you know, on our toes as these yeah. opportunities emerge. So as soon as we get through bidding, we'll be able to assess what may or may not be left relative to what we thought phase two was going to be and also the uh, resiliency element. And then we just need to yep. make adjustments as necessary and be ready to pull the trigger with new funding applications. That's great. Julie, you had your, your hand up as well. Yeah, I just wanted to ask um, the prices that came in on the equipment that you bid out how did those compare to what you expected? And does that give you any indication of where you think prices are going to come in? Yeah, I mean, I think I will say just globally on all of them, they, 
came in slightly below what we had budgeted, you know, at or below. Um, none of these jumped out as being, you know, oh my gosh, you know, what were we doing here? Um, you know, um, Dave, I don't know if you wanted to expand, but I know they, that they were all below. Yeah, I mean, we've got things double three categories of cost for the project. One is equipment. So we feel pretty good about equipment going into the bid. The second one is like bulk materials, concrete, metals. I think we feel pretty good about things like concrete, local supplies, aggregate, stuff like that. Metals is still a yeah. very volatile market. Um, yeah. You know, precious metals and stainless, it, things are all over the place with, with that. So that's a concern. And then the third category is just the, the labor, you know, and contract or markup associated with the work. And that one continues to probably be the most I don't want to call it worrisome, but the big, the, the biggest variability, we really need one of these handful of few qualified wastewater contractors to be hungry. Mm -hmm. And if they are, we'll be fine. But if, you know, if one of them is not hungry, then they all make pretty good profit. And, you know, that's, that yeah. it comes down to that piece. We've heard that there are one or two that didn't bid a previous project for us that now are hungry and are seeing that they're busy now, but next year looks lighter for them. And yeah. that I'm hoping that that's going to prompt them to be more aggressive for Deerfield. But yeah, I, I'm, I don't think any of us are going to rest easy until we open bids. No. Thank you. Okay. Anything else on um, the side of things, at least? No, not on the equipment side. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to do another check-in overall um, on the schedule. Again, I always like to note that this was what we presented back in January. Yeah. Um, you know, we are still on track with this. So, you know, our plan right now, which is, which lines up, which, you know, with where we thought we would be is that we'd be heading out to bid, um, receiving, you know, bids in by the end of March, and then hopefully having a notice to proceed in April. Um, so I think we're, we're lined up pretty nicely with that right now. Um, and my, my biggest uh, question, and I, I have uh, Brenda and, and Barbara on, on the line, and I'm, I'm glad James is here too, is um, money flow, cash flow, like what are we going to need when we got to look at going out to, you know, for some, you know, some bids, so to secure funding, so, um, mm -hmm. and working with USDA and kind of getting all that squared. And, and I know maybe Brenda or Barb might have more pointed questions than I know about, but I know that that's a a big concern of ours. And I talked to James the other day about um, just kind of shoring up that financial schedule again and, and how does that look? So- What um, happened, James? James? Yeah, so I, I can jump in for a minute and uh, Brenda and Barbara, feel free to chime in as well. Um, so Brenda and I had a chance to catch up yesterday on where the okay. finances are at for the town related to the previous clarifier upgrades project and as well as the outlook for this project. And we discussed the retained earnings balance, where you're at to propose rates uh, that were implemented in the fall and what that does for the cash flow. Yeah. And right now we're on track with the cash flow that was provided to the town in May. So we've stayed on schedule with the project. We're still anticipating construction in the June, July range. Um, so the town had mentioned looking at their first ban for the project to be 7.5 million for the first year. And that is on track with what we anticipate will be spent uh, in the first year. Um, and we also talked about the previous clarifier project and paying that ban off. Yeah. And both DPC and from what I heard from the town, we are comfortable with that happening um, and it won't affect the cash flow in any way. So and it'll get that debt off the books. Meaning we do have enough uh, to, to pay that off. I thought we were maybe going to have to do it in two years because we were concerned about what USDA was requiring for, for money left in reserve. And just we always don't want to cut it too short. So, Right, absolutely. Yep. Barbara? And one, one thing I clarified with Brenda yesterday was that the applicant contribution was budgeted in fiscal year 2021 which I okay. wasn't sure of when we spoke, Trevor, but okay. that was budgeted as part of the current fiscal year. Yeah. Um, so for that reason, you know, we're comfortable not splitting it up over two years because you had already budgeted that piece. Okay. Um, 
So Barb and Brenda, do you guys feel good about that or? Yeah, yeah. those are all the points I was curious about. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure you guys all felt comfortable with the cash flow and what we need to do and to borrow. Absolutely, there's, there's um, question in regards to what kind of requirements we have with USDA in regards to the monthly reporting uh, invoices. Those are things that you and I didn't talk about, James. So maybe later on we can have a visit about who's responsible for that and when and how. Yeah, absolutely. And we can loop in USDA as, on an as needed basis to go over those requirements. And I know Jennifer at USDA was, you know, I guess the, the, the law, you know, the kind of the requirements or their rules had changed from the time we started this to now and that they, they really want to look over our, our um, uh, what do you call it? the initial funding? You know, if, if somebody has a better term for that, but um, interim financing. <laughs> thank you, interim financing. Uh, so, I, and I guess we would discuss with them and bond council and all that, wh whatever we need, right? Somebody got mm -hmm. that under control. Oh, I think I think Barbara froze. So. Yeah, great. Um, I would no. I was just going to say that um, as June is coming about and, and we're about to do that ban, we just wanted to make sure that the project was on schedule based on, um, cause we had kind of figured out our borrowing based on the schedule we had last year. Yeah. So if it's on track, um, yeah. that's great. Just didn't okay. want to over borrow or under borrow right. or whatever. Yeah, get it so, too soon perfect. or too late. Great, yeah. well, thank you. I feel good about that. If you guys are both comfortable. Yep. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Great. Good points, Trevor. Um, so this is just kind of a, a summary quick of like the big kind of milestones coming up over the next month here. Um, so our plan currently is to issue the bidding documents out to contractors next week. Nice. Um, you know, a week later, we would be looking to have a pre bid phone call um, with any contractors who wanted to dial in to just generally talk about the project and the bidding process. Yeah. Targeting. Justin, can I just jump in and ask a quick question? Yeah. Other than presumably Keith, Kevin, and Casey, who else from the town would like to be included on the formal plan holders list? So everything's going to be done electronically, but um, just curious um, who else yeah. might like to receive, you know, access to all the bidding docs and addenda and Q and A and all that sort of stuff. I wouldn't mind having the access to it. Not that I, I would do much. I mean, as long as Casey has, I just want to be able to, I've yeah. been trying to keep all I mean, literally things. everybody on the call can do it. It's just, uh, yeah. you know, no matter who wants it, but yeah, certainly. I would, I would like okay. at least, yep. Just to keep keep everything in the same. Any, anybody else want to be included on the, uh, on the plan holders list? You can always get it from me. Keith? Mm -hmm. And we can always add somebody along the way too. That's no yeah. big deal. Yeah, just you get them real time if you're on that yeah. list. Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, and as Dave said, we're gonna have Keith and Kevin and Casey on there to Perfect. start. That's great. We'll add you on, Trevor. Yep, thank you. You add me as well. Oh, okay. great, Julie, really. thank you. I'm not positive I'll get through it, but I'm being- You can ignore the emails if you want. Yeah. <laughs> I'm it's usually the cure for insomnia too. If uh, somebody's having trouble sleeping, just start reading through these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you can add me to it. Just I'm not sure. Is this going to be? That wouldn't be an e open meeting law violation, would it? We're not communicating. Not, not at all. Not just at all. a review. Yeah. Yep. You'll just get a link to a Dropbox so you can download the specs and plans, um, and then you'll get notifications uh, when addenda you know, become available as we move through the bidding process. That's all. Will, will there be, you know, I have this one set of plans here. Is there going to be an updated set of plans that'll come out and we'll get yep. a hard copy here? Yeah. Okay. So yes. it, you, there'll be, and this is always like the, the, the contractors want to peel this thing apart and send it to everybody, you know, in the world. So sure. there'll be a full stamped set of bid docs that's protected in the folder and it'll okay, go out good. through Dropbox. Yep. Um, They'll also be like individual unstamped copies of plans so that the contractor can wheel and deal and send yep. various things to people. So sure. Um, sure. Yeah. What you have Trevor was probably like, you know, 90 something percent, but um, yeah. 
in, in you know it's it's still fine to keep as a paper copy because most of yep. what on there hasn't changed but but there's there's some minor edits and stuff that you'll see and, and so my we question can, was, we need was, to provide one hard copy yes. at town hall no matter what great that's what i was hoping you know for. and then okay. anybody else that that wants one um it's just they're going to change along the way so after Maybe. we're done with bidding yep you know there'll be a town hall set you know keith okay. will obviously have a full set at the plant Yep. Um, Kevin will likely have one at DPW and then, you yep. know, whatever, anybody else okay. that needs sets that's going to be involved during construction as part of the, you know, kind of project team can, can certainly have those sets. We'll, and we'll provide a conform set of bid documents after we go through bidding. Yep. So Perfect. all the addenda will be reflected on the plans and specs and you won't have to go back and forth. Right. Okay, good. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Um, so yeah, bid docs, then we're going to have a phone call. And then I was getting to, uh, so March 3rd, we're targeting right now for actual site tours. So these contractors, you know, are going to need to come out even with everything going on, you know, with COVID. Um, and the way we've done this in the past is that we just have three separate time slots. Um, right now, you know, we could talk with Keith and the town and, and what's more comfortable for everybody there. Um, but essentially what we would do is schedule contractors, tell them we, you know, two people per company and limit the group size to say 10 so everybody could kind of, you know, stand around a tank and, and not be too close. Um, so just do it in kind of a more organized fashion so we know who's going to be there. Um, yep. Uh, so right now we're targeting March 3rd for that. Um, that'll allow the contractors to, you know, walk through the plant and, and see what they need to see. And with the current schedule, March 17th would be when we receive filed subbids. Um, so as part of this project, you know, there's, there's four or five subbids, you know, HVAC, uh, electrical, painting, uh, masonry. Um, so these bids will come in two weeks before the general bid opening, which is on March 31st. Um, so it kind of lines up to be ready April 1st, you know, to start moving forward with going through the process of signing contracts and, and all that good stuff that comes with it. So great. Just kind of a look at the key dates here um, as they stand now. And then I'm um, just trying to think of uh, our meeting schedule as well for like April 7th, I think is our first meeting in April. I mean, we can that's, have one other than that. But that's that perfect. I mean, okay. every, every sub bidder, filed sub bidder and general contractor that's going to bid on this has to be decam pre-qualified. I would be surprised if any of the characters are those that we don't know. Right. Um, you know, so there aren't a lot of unknowns and we don't need a long lead time between opening bids and making a recommendation, you know, going okay. through the vetting process. In yep. all likelihood, the general bidder is going to be one of five. Um, that you know. I'd be surprised yeah. if we saw something different. Yeah. Um, just as, as Justin was going through some of those requirements, I just want to provide kind of a high level update relative to COVID and protection of town staff. So the pre-bid tours will be held outside. No one needs to enter Keith's building. We want to keep, you know, we don't know where anybody's been prior to that. So that's one element. During construction, we've required that the contractor and the engineer will have their own trailers outside. So it's not like somebody has to be in the building with Keith. There's going to be Santa cans for yeah. the contractor and the construction observer. Nobody's going to be in the building using Keith's bathrooms. There's always times where people push the envelope and we just have to reinforce those at the pre-construction meeting and, and Keith. But there is no work that's proposed in Keith's building as part of this project. So, you know, I'm sure he's done a good job keeping him and his operators safe. We'll make sure that we continue to minimize those contacts. Hopefully by the time we get building this project, this thing's all behind us, but um, we'll be careful. Yeah, I, I, I think we're, we're gonna try to work really hard to get our um, the wastewater guys um, get shots. So, you know, get the vaccine. So Can't we'll wait. Yeah. <laughs> we're Man, it's been a long year waiting for that shot. Yeah, we're trying. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I, I would think, I would think by, by March, we're at end of March, we're going to be in the general population. So we'll just make sure everyone that would be in contact. I mean, our highway guys will be done and I, you know, hopefully Keith is done for fairly soon. And so there shouldn't be any issues with that, Dave. We're going to have to, okay. what's more important, I think, I, and I'm very appreciative of what you're doing. What's more important, however, is, you know, people um, on the job wearing masks because um, uh, 
the problem is we don't know the variants that are coming, um, how, what, what the effectiveness of the flu shot is. It's, it's effective in the sense that you won't get sick and be hospitalized or you know, possibly you know, have death, but you still could get sick. So it's sort of like uh, a year where the flu shot doesn't quite match. And um, so you could still get the flu, but you'll only be sick for a day or two. So I'm, we're gonna be moving on. Uh, and I think definitely by spring and summer things, there'll be enough people having vaccine that we're, it's not a huge risk, but the masks, wearing masks and still trying to do social distancing is huge. Those are the kind of things you have to worry about. Yeah. Yep. All right. Sounds good. Anti-social here in my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. really, it has been. And I know you guys can relate, right? <laughs> Not a lot of gatherings going on these days. <laughs> no. um, okay. So that's kind of what I had prepared. I think Dave brought up a good point that I didn't throw in this presentation, which was maybe just showing everybody what the bid form is going to look like. Okay. Um, so what the contractor is going to fill in to kind of just show how the 30B procurement fits into that. So I'll go through it relatively quickly, but essentially contractors, you know, they're going to have one price, one lump sum base bid that they're going to, you know, throw at this project. We Justin, bring can you zoom that out a little bit for, uh, for those like me that are a little older with our eyes here? <laughs> zoom in. Yeah, there you uh, go. Make it, yeah, works. there you go. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Thank you. So there will be uh, one base bid price that the contractor fills in. Uh, it'll get subdivided here into a few components. Um, here's, you know, so here's one of the subcomponents of the base bid, I should say. So not alternates yet, this is the base bid. So for example, the screen, we, we procured through a chapter 30B process. So we now get to plug that number in and it is a known. So all contractors have to carry this price. That's the piece of equipment. And essentially the contract that the town will be signing with that equipment manufacturer get transferred to the contractor and he is now, you know, essentially in that agreement with the, with the vendor. Um, so that's kind of just how that works. I just wanted to show you how it fits in. Yep. A couple other breakout items for concrete repair, you know, kind of as needed as we find them. Um, and then obviously the sub is become part of that base bid. So that's, that's, Pretty much the base bid. I just wanted to touch quickly on the alternates that we keep discussing. Um, so we structured, I believe there's going to be seven of them here. And essentially we can add these on as the project budget allows. So the base bid is going to be X dollars. If we still have you know room to add these items, which we anticipate we will, we'll continue to go down the list. They have to be added in the order that they're presented here. Um, so the first one that we mentioned came from the phase two project. It kind of became more critical um, to include it as part of this phase one project is the plant water system. So we'll have a price broken out for that piece of work to supply it, install it, and we'll get to choose whether or not that gets included in the base project there. The grit removal system is kind of the 2A. So for these next few, they might be you know, a piece of equipment and then the cost to install it. So A is just the equipment, which this would have been a 30B number, which it is not because we're throwing it back to the general contractor. We'll still get to see his price on that equipment. Yeah. And then two, and then two B will be the cost to install that system. Um, so I'm just going to go through them quick. We could circle back on any of these if people have questions. Justin, I I think for two those will get combined before we issue it. Probably, yeah. That was set up as the 30B. Yeah, yeah you're right. So this is how it would have been. Like the clarifier is a good example. We have the 30B price for just the equipment plugged yeah. in. And then obviously the contractor has to account for his labor, his work to actually put that equipment in. Yep. Um, so that's why it's a 3A and 3B. Okay. Water grit removal clarifier. That's kind of one, two, three. Um, number four is relocation of some existing pumps, which was a great cost saving uh, measure that Keith came up with, as Dave mentioned earlier. Earlier. Um, five A and B again is a 30B piece of equipment for the UV system and then installation of that UV system. And then number six is a mixing system for the scum tank, um, which is kind of just the lowest priority here. Yep. And 
essentially we summarize that the bids can be awarded based on any one of these numbers of scenarios. So, you know, if the base bid fits within the budget, we just have to accept, you know, with only that in consideration and, and so on. So we could select up to the final alternate, which is number five there. No. I know that was a lot, but I just wanted to kind of get through that and show you what the bid form is going to look like and what the contractors are going to submit on. And yep. flexibility, as you see, built in to be able to go down the list and fit everything, you know, that we can into the project without having to go back and rebid the project if we just included this in the base bid, got a higher price, and we can't move forward. Right. Essentially, the goal is structuring it this way. That's good. Is this is this what happened in orange? You couldn't you couldn't separate it out. Yeah, so we didn't come into it with enough alternates um, to allow to remove some of those later alternates to reduce the cost of the bids. So essentially, we had you know one number, and if it's high, it's high, and we can't move forward with it. In this case, we could look at it all, and if we had to peel the last alternate off to fit within the budget, you know, we could still award the project and continue to move. Um, yep. just kind of the, the goal. We don't yep. want to explode or, or held back and go through an, another entire bidding cycle um, to get the project out. Yeah, we'd lose that that construction time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So right. we're not saying we're sacrificing any of this stuff. Ideally, we get it all, but yep. it just allows for that flexibility. You know, if we have to start peeling back little pieces here and there. Yep. No, that makes sense. I, um, I just know from Orange that you know, they, they had problems with that. So, okay. And we've restructured their, um, their bid form, you know, to be similar where they can do the same thing. It just provides that flexibility. And I think we're going to do that a lot more moving forward. So it was a lesson learned. So I think that's all I had for my overview. Mm -hmm. I'll open it up if anybody had anything, kind of kept it to an hour here, which is nice. Yeah. I feel I feel pretty good about where we're going. Um, you know, I know uh, Skip wasn't able to get on, but I'm so grateful Julie's here um, from the finance committee. She's our, our chair of the finance committee now. Um, do you do you see any? Do you have any questions, Julie, on, on any of this? Does this feel like we're moving in the right direction? Yeah, see, I'll see. It's pretty clear. Thanks. Great. Okay. Good. And um, Kevin and Keith, you're all pretty comfortable on. Where we're going i know kevin's roaming around the building <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i'm very happy with the way things are going okay good, good. i knew it's it taking a while but we're getting there for you and this beautiful organization dave and company all you yep. got you're doing great work and very thank very, you. very refreshing it. to see this laid out so logically and methodically and it's just i love a good plan like that i gotta yeah. love it Love it. It's coming, coming together. together. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Kevin's good. Um, anybody else on the line? Uh, I guess I know, I think um, Brendan and Barb are off, but they, they're comfortable and that makes me comfortable. Um, I think we're, we're good. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. How about that? <laughs> yeah. I can see Kevin's ear pretty well. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin was busy. Oh, he's over at the clinic. He's over there. Yeah. Oh, he's over at the uh, at the vaccination site. Yeah, Thank he you, delivered Kevin, everything Jonah. today. Yeah, he delivered everything today. So great. Um, have hassle with the weather. Tuesday was our move day, and there's going to be a snowstorm. So. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin was wonderful. He's hero of the day already. Yes. How's it looking over there? Good. Uh, not bad. Um, we got a uh, let's see, the parking lot wasn't um, plowed. We're in the process of doing that. We're doing some salt and sanding. Uh, we've got uh, things that are sticking up out of the floor. They're going to go in the uh, you know, floor machine. So I've got probably 400 because I, I lost count around 230 okay. of objects that are sticking out of the ground. What I'm doing now is I'm walking around making marks for them to come by with a grinder and, and grind these things off. Otherwise we're going to ruin our front chairs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. His cleaning equipment. Right. Okay. So, yep. and that, that, and it's just that, and just a liability to uh trip hazards. Yeah. Make sure nobody trips over anything. So, yep. yep. but okay. yeah, we'll get it. We'll get it done. And you're good with the, uh, the plant and the plan so far on this meeting. 
Yeah, everything everything sounded great. I mean, obviously, you know, Dave, Dave and his crew, you know, they've got it together. You know, uh, Keith hit it right on the head that, you know, it's really nice being able to have somebody that's, uh, um, you know, a, a good professional people coming out and knowing what they're doing and, and not trying to do additional things that don't need to be done. You yep. know, it's not a deal where they're just trying to hurry up and jack something up to be able to make a little bit of cash. Right. And unfortunately, yep. you know, as well as I do, you know, we've already been down that road before and, Yep. You know, we don't want to go down that road again. So, but yeah, no, all in all, I, I think I'm happy. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Justin, for all your work, um, for putting all these meetings together to get us to this point. I look forward yeah. to continuing yeah. on. Thank you, Dave. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Thanks for everybody hopping on. This morning. Yeah. I'll get yeah. Skip an update. As well. update. And uh, yeah. thank you so much. Have a great weekend. We'll talk soon, everybody. Take okay. care. Yep. Right. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Julie.